of the e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6, now white plays e5, knight d7, and now f4 to close the game. And black continues with c5. So this is all very well known theory. I'm speeding up the explanation of the opening. Well, I'm not really explaining the opening because we've gone through in the previous video. So if you haven't seen the Steinitz before, then you should check these, video out, these videos out first. And then this one. Well, this is very well known theory. We have to play knight f3 now. And now black plays knight c6. And now we continue with bishop e3. So in the previous videos, I went through a little bit of everything, like queen b6 move, uh, pawn takes, also bishop e7. So now we have to go through another very popular move that is played a lot, and they used to give me a lot of headache in the past. It's a6. So the idea is to immediately start going for an attack, like b5, b4, and then bring the queen to a5. And white has to... Well, this is not supposed to be the greatest of all defenses, but white has to be careful because, because it's very tricky. So now white continues with queen d2. Natural development of the queen, the same development, the same diagonal of the bishop, and also that the, the main reason is that we need to castle long side and then start storming the pawns on the king side. Mm -hmm. So after queen d2 and let's say bishop e7, white continues with bishop d3. We don't have to worry about the pawn going to c4 because we will just move the bishop back, and black has given up the control, the attack, the pressure on the square d4. So we don't have to worry. It looks like we're closed up into this massive pyramid. But the thing is that the attack is going to happen on the on the king side and nothing is going to stop us from pushing the g4, h4 pawns. And black will not have the same very strong attack on the queen side. First of all, because we haven't even decided what side we're going to castle. Uh, well, probably queen side. But the thing is we might choose not to castle because in a, in a game that is so close, we could play a move like king f2 and then continue the attack. We've got nothing to worry. There's no way the black can infiltrate our territory. So we played bishop d3. And black, well, black can try to, put, to play the pawn to b5. We're going to look at that move as well. But let's go through what happens after castle. So right now in this very position, we're not far at all from the opening moves. We're still in the opening. Now we have to play pawn takes to c5, and black will have to capture back. This move is done because after long castling, the queen and the rook will be on the same file controlling the d file. So we've opened up that file for us. So black can recapture with the bishop or with the knight. What happens if black recaptures with the knight? Well, now, all theoretical, we can already go for a strong attack. The great gift usually doesn't happen if black has the queen and the bishop as well together on the same diagonal. Because then the knight, after the sack, well, we are going to do the sacrifice. Bishop h7, check. And, well, unless black wants to just have a silly king on an open file, ready for us to keep pushing h4, h6, and then infiltrating our pieces, unless black wants to just lose a pawn, then we can even choose to bring the bishop back, which is fine. But black, let's say black takes, but black will have to take. Now we play this move. Bishop takes knight. The idea, of course, is to remove this bishop from the diagonal that controls our knight so that we can jump in g5 and do the usual Greek gift. So bishop takes back, and now knight g5 check. Well, in case the bishop didn't take our knight, then we will just take the, the, the dark square bishop, swap, and then we will play knight g5 anyway. So after knight g5, king goes back to g8. It wouldn't make sense to go down like g6, for instance, because, well, queen d3 is just deadly. Black, I mean, it's, it's uh, not going to work. Like, king moving, for example. Then queen h7 is checkmate. Or pawn to f5, we can play queen g3, threatening discover checks. Yeah, the, the position is completely falling apart. No matter how black defends, then you can find your way to win here. There's uh, there's no more theory at the, in this point. This is just, uh, we're just going to capture a lot of stuff. So... So after the check of the knight in g5, one more idea is queen, uh, king to h6. But again, we're just going to play queen d3. And we have a threat of checkmate. And the rook cannot protect the checkmate because knight f7 wins the queen. Also, there's a possibility to go to h3 as well with the queen. So I'll just leave it there, telling you that the evaluation of the engine now is plus 11. So I guess that's enough. So after the check of the knight in g5, the king goes back to g8. And now what continues still with queen d3 anyway. 
we want to go to h7 and checkmate. A move like g6 is silly because it, it, it just doesn't stop us from playing queen h3, right? And we are infiltrating easily. So black will have to play rook to e8. This is the best move because after queen h7 check, the king can move. So rook e8 was a move that gave the black king an escape. Now we have to play queen h5. We are threatening a checkmate in f7. And let's pay attention to the fact that queen e7 to protect this cannot be played because of a very silly checkmate. So queen d7 stops the development of the bishop, makes it even weaker. So, well, queen c7, but still, the idea is to play castle now, long side. This looks weird because we're giving up a pawn, the f4 pawn, but we have a plan with this. So what can black do now? There's, there's, it's not like there's many things that black can do. The, the pieces are pretty trapped. I mean, the knight doesn't have any anywhere significant to go to, and uh, the white king is completely safe. So let, let's look at this line. Bishop e3 check, king moves, and we give up this pawn. It's all fine. Now we're going to play queen to h8 check, and after the king moves, we can take the pawn in g7. So why didn't we do this before? We could have done it before. Why did we need to wait for bishop e3 making a check to our king and, and, and losing our queen f4? We needed to castle, right, for king safety. So that's a thing. We needed to put the rook on this file. It's very important for the rook to control such an important file, especially with this king in e7. And, more, and also, because now that the bishop is in this square in f4 instead of being in c5, the chances are that he takes a knight. And if he takes a knight, we can take back and we are continuing our attack. So we are infiltrating in that square. We're also attacking queen f7 right now. And we've also opened up the f file for uh, the other rook. So, yeah, what well, development, development matters much more than pawns. So let's say, for example, bishop takes knight. And now we take this comes with check. Well, if the king moves, we have obviously knight d5. If pawn takes, then rook d5 is deadly. I don't know what happens now. Well, king moves, but then rook d6 forces black to lose the queen. And after queen takes and queen check, there's a checkmate happening soon, right? The king will have to move, whatever, king goes here and queen d6, it's over. King here, same thing, and now, yeah, I think we can stop it right here. There's a checkmate in like seven moves or something. So going back here, when the bishop takes the knight, we take back. And then uh, what happens if the king just goes back? Then check. The king going to g8 will just allow the infiltration of the rook. So rook to d3 now, going to g3 for a checkmate. Black can take the, the pawn with the knight, because, with the knight for the simple reason that then the knight will go to g6. Taking with the queen will be a mistake. Even worse, I mean, the game is lost already, it's compromised. Rook g3 check, and after the knight goes to g6, we're not going to sacrifice because it doesn't quite work. We're just going to play rook to f1. And now we can think of sacrificing, and the game is completely compromised. Black will have to give up a lot of material in order to, not to be checkmated. So, back here again, after bishop takes and queen check, king goes back, and queen h6 check, so the king can't go to g8, we'll have to go back. Queen f6 now, and the king goes up simply because we cannot move on the side because of the knight sacrifice available with the rook infiltrating. Now we play rook to f1. The queen will not be able to go and take the pawn in e5, protected by the knight with an attempt of swapping queens because we have a, a, a threat of checkmate in f7. The idea anyway, whatever black does, is to play queen to h8 check, and then the king moves, and then we can think of sacrificing as well. So, and one more thing, let's see what happens if the knight takes here, then we simply attack the knight. The idea is to capture it. So black will have to move again. So knight goes here, but then we have the same thing happening. So queen h8, king moves, and here we are, basically. Same position as before. So, back at the same position where we were before, what happens if the bishop doesn't take the knight, but rather takes the pawn in e5, it come, it's protected by the knight and by the queen, so we can't take the bishop, it comes with an attack on the queen, and also it, it wins another pawn. So it looks like it makes perfect sense, right? But now we can make a sacrifice. Knight e5, check. We're attacking the queen as well. And black will not be able to move the king because if the king goes, well, the king will have to go on this d file. And then when we take the king, the queen, it comes with an attack of the rook. So it's discovered check and we will have time to remove our queen. So black will have to take this knight. Now we can actually play queen f7 because... The pawn in e6 is no longer there, 
and as soon as the king moves we will be able to take the pawn with check so after the check well the king goes to d8 we have sacrificed some material for this situation so let's just see how to accurately continue rook takes d5 check and after let's say bishop to d6 we play queen to g6 the idea is to play knight f7 check which forces black to give away the queen if black doesn't give the queen away Parade goes down with the king, we're going to come in here, so that's a disaster. If black goes down here, we're still going to just take everything, queen takes, and we're winning. So, after queen to g6, best move by black is queen to e7. The reason is that black is trying to, es to escape with the king c7 and then b8. So, now we still play knight f7 check, king moves, and now we take this bishop. So what's happening now? The queen cannot take the knight, of course, because it's defended by the queen and rook. And there is no checkmate here because we will simply come back with a tempo. So after now, best move by black is rook to d8, attacking the knight. There's three attackers here. We're going to play this excellent move, queen to g3. So now we are threatening a discover check, deadly discover check. And also, so we, we were attacking the d6 square even from g6, but now we are pinning this, which means that after rook takes, we're, we're pinning the rook, so now we're going to bring the other rook over. So um, so we're just putting more and more pressure on the pinned piece. Black can play some engine moves like queen e5, best move. The, the queen is protected by the knight, and if the rook moves, then the black rook is coming down with the checkmate. So still, we, we're going to take the queen. Knight takes back. I mean, this is all, all, we've gone so far, just assuming that black will play the absolute best moves. We're going to play rook to d6, and material-wise, we have two rooks for rook, bishop, and knight, but we have three more pawns. So it, it, lo it looks like we're kind of equal here, but we're winning because we have two passed pawns. Right, and just going back a few moves, after the rook d5 check, what happens if black blocks with the bishop in, e in d7, then we play knight check. You know, we're forking king and queen, so black will have to take with the rook, and we can take back, the, bi the bishop is pinned. Black's best move now is king to c8. We're going to play check. Of course, black cannot block it with the bishop because we can take it for free. So queen d8. And now we swap queens. Black has to take with the king, not with the knight, because otherwise the bishop in d6 will be, the bishop in e5 will be taken. So, so king takes. And now the last rook goes on to put more pressure on the d7 bishop. And well, the only one to find the right move to play now is the engine. And it's bishop to d4, right? Because we have double attack on the, on the bishop and it cannot be defended in any other way. The knight cannot go anywhere to defend the bishop. Well, it could go to b8, but then we can take the bishop in e5. So bishop d4, we play c3. The bishop is basically pinned. And after king to c7, we can take the, bish the bishop with the pawn. And we are in a very similar situation as before, except we have a we have an isolated pawn this time. But we still have our two passed pawns, and we still have a massive advantage. All right. Let's so let's make a recap because it's always good to do a recap. So knight c3 and knight f6. Steinitz is on the board. Knight e7, f4, f4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, and now bishop e3. And now black is playing a6. So we go on with. Queen d2. So black has to develop the pieces. Bishop e, bishop e7. We play bishop d3. And after castling, we take the pawn in c5. And we're opening this file. Besides, we're also preparing for this plan. Also because since we have a bishop in d3 and we're pre preparing the, the great gift. And if you don't know what the great gift is, well, that's what it is. Bishop a7 check. Then the knight g5 check. And the queen going to another light square like d3. Or sometimes when the queen is in d1. You can do the great gift check and then knight g5 and then the queen goes to light square. I think everyone knows about it. So we take the pawn in c5 also because we cannot allow this pawn to go to c4 now. Because yes, there's no problem for our bishop. But now we do have a possibility to play the great gift. Because when you have a pawn in e5 and the black knight cannot go to f6. Then the h7 square becomes a weakness. Because the main protector of the h7 square is the knight. So the knight cannot be in f6. So now we're going for the for the Greek gift. We have some Greek gift ideas. So we take the pawn. So earlier we went through what happens after knight c5. This time we're going to go through what happens after bishop takes c5. So here we take the bishop. Knight takes back. And now we're equally material. But we're going to play the Greek gift. This is a weird one. Check. We win a pawn. King takes. And now we play queen f2. We're attacking the knight. And we're also threatening knight g5 check. 
with the idea of going to h4 without being taken by the queen because the knight is covering us and this is deadly so after knight f after queen f2 attacking the knight if the knight were to go away well the knight will have to move or maybe be protected maybe with b6 or maybe with queen e7 i don't know i haven't really gone through these lines but the thing is that after any of these moves then knight g5 is coming otherwise white is simply up a pawn and has much better chances especially because the evaluation now is something about four plus four so let's say for example queen e7 to protect the knight or whatever knight g5 is coming king g8 queen h4 checkmate and well it's stoppable only by sacrificing the queen that is the only way to stop the checkmate so then we win the game if if king goes to g6 instead then we're still going to play queen h4 with a threat of h7 checkmate and that's unstoppable well i mean black will have to give up a lot of material so after the queen f2 move attacking the knight the best move by black according to the engine is knight takes e5 black knows he is going to have to lose material and he goes for that pawn which makes perfect sense it's a desperado move so now we have to take the knight and right now we're equal the only thing is i think just our king is better than his king okay i think i think our king will be better than the black king best move by black now is knight e4 and well, of course, now every idea... Well, also the reason why the knight took the pawn in e5 was just to uh, get, get rid of the f4 pawn so that we didn't have the knight g5 move anymore. Now the best move by white, obviously, is to, to play queen e3. The idea is to take the knight because we have double attack on it. And, of course, taking the knight here would be wrong because pawn takes. We've got to move the knight again. And then we're not going to be able to castle queenside. We, are, we would love to, to castle queenside, so to have a rook on the same file of the queen... And the king would be safer also because the white player doesn't have a f pawn anymore so so well queen e3 and now the best move by black is to get rid of this knight also because well we had the double attack on it so we're going to take back with the queen and keep the pawn structure safe this is to assume that black will play the absolute best moves so now the best move by black is bishop to d7 and best by white is queen e3 the idea here if if we were to play again here we will play castle long side and then h4 knight g5 and then after the move, after the king moves because of the check, queen to d3, which will be which will be stopped by g6, and that will allow us to play queen to g3 with the idea of h5. Now, of course, we don't get to play many moves in a row, but that's the plan we're going for. So, and we have to know it. So let's go back where we were. Right, black played bishop d7, white played queen e3. So the best response by black is to play rook c8, and this is the case where we cannot castle alongside because. Black will be able to put too much pressure on this uh, king, on our king. So if black plays rook to c8, we castle short side. And, well, of course, the rook cannot take the pawn because then this is a silly fork and we win the rook. This is what we're going for. We're going for the weakness in f7. Rook f2, rook f1, and then knight g5. And we're going to go for this pawn no matter what. Besides, we also have threats of queen h3 eventually. It depends on how black plays. Especially, we can't leave the knight hanging, but after a move like king goes back, then we just have too much pressure here, and if the queen goes to protect him, we can still take. Mm -hmm. so let's go back a few moves, and let's assume that, of course, black will play their best response. After white does the, the short side castle, black's best move is to go back to g8 to avoid annoying checks. So now white has to play c3. We're going to keep this pawn structure like this. a3 is also possible at some point depending on what black does. The, the goal now here is to play, well, we have an ambition. Our goal is rook a to e1, knight to d4, and then the idea of playing rook f6 with queen g3 coming, right? Rook f6, in case gets taken, queen g3 creates a mate in 12 threat, right? This is gonna be like check and then the king moves and then you just check forever until you're able to take this pawn so everybody should be familiar with this pattern so if the king moves whatever let's say here doesn't make doesn't ma make any different check again and well the king coming closer to us will just run into rook low mower type of checkmate and the king just going back allows us to take with the usual check and so on right here we are again after c3 move black's best move is f6 now of course we don't take we're going to play rook a to e1. It would be amazing if they were to take us and we could get to place a knight in f5. It would be just glorious. 
but assuming well we, we're playing black's absolute best moves so after black's best move, we're just going to go through a couple of more engine moves i mean presuming you will never play against a super grandmaster that plays like stockfish then you will never even have to go this far after bishop b5 attacking the rook, rook f2 black's best move again is to take the pawn in order to release this rook we're going to take this pawn and we're finally targeting this very weak e6 square typical weakness of the players who play french or karkan after the bishop going after let's say rook to c6 to defend the pawn we can play knight d4 and we're just better here because we will be able to take this bishop well if the rook moves we'll take the bishop we'll be able to take this pawn with check afterwards otherwise black will have to take back with the pawn and we are breaking the pawn structure of our opponent in a crucial moment like this if black defends with this rook this is the worst mistake because now queen h5 is compromising the game forever there's nothing stopping knight g4 knight g5 from coming and all the following threats and then you can figure out how to finish the game from from here so the best move is bishop going back to d7 and now the queen goes back to e3 with a plan which is basically rook e to f1 doubling up the rook and then knight to g5 and now that both the f pawn and the h pawn are gone there's nothing bothering this knight anymore and after black's decision either to swap rooks or not well of course black will have to swap rooks or maybe move the queen away white will anyway be able to enjoy the pressure he's putting on e6 and well white will have to play accurately to continue and win this end game but it's just completely favorable for white he has a solid advantage by now right so back at the initial position now after black plays a6 and white plays queen d2 let's quickly mention two different scenarios black can play b5 immediately so storming the pawns on the queen side already this attack on the queen side is met by an attack on the king side so we play h4 and at least unlike black we have a choice on where we're going to be castling we can still castle even king side depending on how it goes we will probably castle queen side but the black player we know it for sure that he's going to castle the king side the other side would be just too crazy so let's say let's imagine an attack of pawns that many players who play against the french Steinitz could be annoyed about after b4 right there's nothing to worry the knight just goes to a4 this knight cannot possibly be attacked by any pawn therefore we can leave it there forever we don't have to worry so how well black can't push this pawn because it gets taken and right now the knight is also attacking the pawn in c5 so if, if black that if black just pushes this pawn for example then we can take the pawn on c5 as well you can either we can also take it with the pawn and it's pretty well protected besides the knight is controlling the b6 square preventing the infiltration of the queen so after a move like c4 for example um, black saves the pawn and well in this scenario we are exploring what happens if black decides to go all in with the pawns on the queen side we just play h5 the idea is to go h6 and mess up with the pawn structure of our opponent if black were to play to move like g6 we're controlling the crucial g7 square where the king was supposed to be castling and so that's terrible if they if they take with the pawn then we just keep going but then black's king side is going to look terrible as well so after h5 and best move h6 by black we play b3 now there's a double attack on the pawn in c4 we want to take it and in that case will be just a clean pawn up with no compensation whatsoever for black and now best move by black according to the engine it's knight to b6 the knight gets puts, puts more defense over that pawn but still this is just winning for white knight takes knight queen has to take back and then we take this pawn and well we are up a pawn and we're just trying to take another pawn as well we have a massive center and yeah white king is not very safe at the moment but it's going to castle soon well if the pawn if the pawn takes the pawn in c4 for example you can play d5 and win the game there's a double attack on the queen so this tactics appearing because our position is better and besides we're also threatening to create a pass pawn so that was just a blunder even though it was suggested by the engine but that was the move that the engine played in a moment where nothing else could be done so here uh, b3 if black doesn't play the best move which is knight b6 but rather plays c3 which is a more uh, human type of move c3 attacks the queen the pawn is no longer being threatened to be taken the queen will have to move and black probably thinks of uh, playing h uh, a5 a4 eventually and try to calm down with the rook the queen now switches to f2 but the, anyway this pawn attack right was wrong because black has released all the pressure that he was creating in the center after this move now our goal is to play bishop to d3 
the bishop here just sits in that amazing square forever. Nobody's going to attack it. And then castle, and then f5, and we're completely winning. Because, well, we're threatening just so much stuff. We're threatening to take this pawn. The pawn will take back. Bishop g6. If the pawn doesn't take back, we take the pawn. And then we've got lots of nasty discovered checks in case we have queen and rooks together. Now, of course, we got to this situation because we moved a few moves in a row. But think about it. This is our plan and what can be done to be stopped. Well, nothing really. We just played queen f2 to react against the attack of the c3 pawn. So now black, let's say black needs to develop. Uh, there's no other moves really. Whatever other move that black does, the game is so close that there's not threats that black can make. That means we're still going to do these moves, right? Bishop d3, castle, and 5, and so on. After black tries to do something good, like bishop e7, now we play queen g3, targeting the weakness of the pawn that is being attacked. We have this h5 pawn that we put crucially in that square, preventing any sort of uh, counterattack or pawns counterattack, maybe, because we can just take and, and start swapping everything. So after queen g3 and black castles, we play f5. We have an we have a threat of taking the pawn in h6. So if if black pawn takes the pawn in f5, we can take an exchange with the checkmate threat, and black will have to give up the exchange for that, right? Because he's gonna have to push the pawn, and uh, well, the bishop can't really join the game because of the pawn in e5. So the the g7 square will be in huge trouble. And if black plays the best move, which is king h8 right now. We're going to play f6. This is a typical sacrifice uh, aimed at destroying the king's side. So we're threatening mating 1. We're threatening also the bishop. So after pawn takes, we play queen to f4, threatening uh, h6 square and um, a strong attack also with the involvement on the rook potentially. Rook h3, uh, rook h3, rook g3. That's an idea. So the best move by black now, engine move, is knight takes pawn. The idea is that when we take back, and we have to take back, the knight takes back and we don't have a pawn in the center anymore, we can't attack f6 anymore, and queen f6, queen, queen, queen h6 isn't leading the checkmate, because black is willing to give up even more material to keep alive. The game is won anyway after this brilliant move, knight b6, which attacks the rook and the bishop. You can argue that the bishop is defender and the rook can move, but let's say rook b8, the knight is defended, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna win this knight. If pawn takes, queen takes with check, and we're attacking the rook and the king. And if the rook moves to a7 instead, and simply knight takes here, and the bishop attacks the rook. Right back at the starting position, black played a6, and we played queen d2. What happens if black plays c4 immediately? We already kind of mentioned this at the beginning of the video. The idea though is to play b4, b5, b4 and have a more threatening looking pawn chain. Also, it stops the idea of bishop b3. Well, now we just carry on with this type of plan. Bishop e2, the idea, the idea is to play f5 right now. Well, if we, if we got the chance to play again, we will play f5 with the idea of taking the pawn in e6 and then after taking back then we play knight g5 we have this bishop coming here with castling we have the rook protecting f7 square for the knight so that's uh, uh that's what we're going for here we are we just played bishop e2 we have the, the goal of playing f5 the best possible move by black is queen to a5 as soon as white castles long side if he decides to do so then b5 b4 attacking the knight the queen will have an attack on a1 it's a typical move against the uh, French, and so Black by playing this move, Black is just telling White that he should probably castle kingside. And after a move like b5, we play f5. So he's attacking on our side, we're attacking on another side. There's no need to get defensive. Best way to respond to an attack on the side of the board is to attack the other side. So after f5, in a move like b4, we ignore the knight being attacked. Because we've now got everything we need on these. Look at this. Look how threatening these pieces are. So we can take the pawn here. We don't care about getting taken because then we have all sort of nasty attacks. This is check. The king will have to move. Well, the king taking the pawn will, will run into some suicidal knight g5. And then, um, yeah, there's, there's probably going to be a, a checkmate in checkmate soon. So, for example, now knight g5 check. 
and the, the bishops are activating. If the king tries to find some shelter, we're still going to play bishop h5. It's a brilliant move. We don't we leave our queen to be taken because bishop f7 is checkmate. So after a move like g6, protecting that, queen f2, we're threatening a ch checkmate in f7. And this, the position here is amazing for white. This is unstoppable. Black will have to give up material in order to stop that attack. So after black plays b4, we can take the pawn. And again, if, if they take and we take and the king moves, then, well, the, we just take the pawn c3. And now we have an idea of playing bishop to g5, then swap the bishop potentially, and then infiltrate the queen in g5 with double attacks. Plus we have a passed pawn. So the, the piece sacrifice was absolutely justified. So if we were to play again, now we will play bishop g5, right? And then take, take, and then if, uh, well, if the knight takes, we do have this e6 move. Queen g7 is also acceptable. Plenty of plenty of uh, moves are available. If the king takes, then pretty much the same thing. The queen is still going to g5 with a check. So let's not do this. And let's say, that, well, it's black to move anyway. If black plays bishop to e7, just to prevent all of that, rook a to b1 with a very simple but deadly and beautiful plan. Well, first of all, the queen can't take this pawn, just to make an example, because then rook a1 traps it. And also our plan now is to play bishop to c4. And we have a dominating center, and there's no way for black to stop the pawn in f7 needed to take it, especially after a move like knight to g5, and uh, the queen and the bishop are backed up. So that, that sacrifice was actually just an engine sacrifice. So that's completely fine. If black takes it would be a pleasure to force black to give up material due to the storm of central pass pawns. 